got another set of questions for A-level chemistry multiple choice practice. So this is organic number seven. I've got a separate playlist for inorganic and physical if you wanted to check those out. I hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, why don't you consider doing that? As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so make a start to so a nice easy question to start with. Which compound is used for proton exchange in NMR spectroscopy? And the answer is C, D2O. Moving on to number two. So the functional group that reacts with 2,4-DNP but not with tollens is a ketone. So what I'm going to do is identify the functional groups in these molecules and then we'll be able to work out what the answer is. So in A, we've got a ketone and we've got a carboxylic acid. So that will definitely react with 2,4-DNP and it won't react with tollens. Ah, that's good. That's the answer. We should rule the other ones out just for revision purposes. So in B, we've got a secondary alcohol and an aldehyde. So that aldehyde group's going to react with 2,4-DNP and with tollens. So that's why that one's wrong. Uh, C, you've got a ketone and an aldehyde so it's going to react with 2,4-DNP but it's also going to react with tollens because of the aldehyde group so that's why that's wrong and D is a secondary alcohol so that won't react with 2,4-DNP or tollens. Moving on to number three so C3H4 is the molecular formula of propyne you'll notice that all the options are CNH2N so if we work out that now so C3 H2M would be 6, so we need to subtract 2 from that. So there's your answer. CNH2N minus 2, so B. Number 4, so I've highlighted the functional groups in paracetamol, and we've got an amide and a phenol. So the answer was C. Number 5, so each red dot that I've drawn there represents a hydrogen. So how many red dots have we got? How many hydrogens have we got? Uh, 24 is the answer, so B. B. Moving on to number six, which statement supports the delocalized model of benzene and not the Kekulé model? So let's see if A is right. Sigma bonds overlap the form of pi system. No, that's wrong. It's P orbitals do that. So A is wrong. Carbon-carbon bond lengths are all the same. Yep, that is the right answer. We'll just do the other ones. So C, enthalpy change of hydrogenation is more exothermic than expected. No, it's less exothermic and benzene is more reactive than alkenes with bromine. No, it's less reactive, so B. Number seven, we've basically got to identify the positions of the carbon-carbon double bonds and the methyls, so we get the lowest possible numbers. So if you number from right to left, you get the lowest numbers. So we've got one, three, six for the starting positions of those double bonds. So that means B's out and D's out. And the methyl groups are on 3 and 5. So A is the answer. Moving on to number 8, I've come up with a very simple way of representing the complete combustion of an alkane. So alkanes react with oxygen and form CO2 and H2O. So we've got the moles of the alkane. And we've effectively got the moles of O2. We just need to do um, the volume in decimeters cubed divided by 24, the molar gas volume. So we can see that. 0.1 moles of the alkane is written with 0.95 moles of oxygen. So if we turn that into a 1 to something ratio, that means it's 1 to 9.5. So you've got two options now. You've got a sort of fairly time-consuming option, or you've got a very quick sort of mathematical option, but you may or may not know about the second one. I'll do both, and you can decide which one you prefer. So the time taken option is to go through the combustion reactions and balance for the oxygen, making sure you've just got the one mole of the alkane. So I've already sort of partially balanced this one. So C5H12 for pentane, 5CO2s, 6H2Os. So how many O2s do we need? 5 twos, 10 plus 6, 16. So 8. So it's not that one. Moving on to hexane now, so C6H14 is going to make 6 CO2, 7 H2Os. So how many O2s do we need? 6 twos are 12, plus 7 is 19. So 19 over 2 is 9.5. So that was the answer, so it was option B. 
So the other way to do it is to use this generic formula, this algebraic formula for the complete combustion of any alkane. And all we need to do is sub in the x and y values for the alkanes and then work out the oxygen value using this x plus y over 4. So we're starting with pentane, x is 5, y is 12. So when you put it into there, you get 8. So we already know that's not the right answer. C6H14, so 6 plus 14 over 4 gives 9.5. There's the answer. So I would just go with whichever method you prefer there. Moving on to number 9, so we've got to find how many different proton environments we've got in each of these molecules. Obviously the, the most will be the greatest number of peaks in the proton NMR spectrum. The blue-grey line represents a line of symmetry and we can use that to um, identify equivalent um, environments. So starting with A, you can see these positions are um, equ equidistant from the line of symmetry. So they're equivalent, likewise they are so this one's got two. Um, B, you've got those positions are equivalent. Likewise, they are, so two again. Moving on to C, so we've got these two are equivalent. That's unique. That's unique, so we've got three in that one. And D, these are all equivalent. And the only other hydrogen in the molecule is there, so there's only two in that one. So, C was the answer. Number 10, so the fragment ion with an M over Z at 43 is something like C3H7 plus or CH3CO plus. And hopefully you can see B, you've got that C3H7 plus. So, that was the answer. Number 11, so I would always annotate an infrared spectrum. So, the peak around here due to either the OH of an alcohol or a phenol and this here is characteristic of a C double bond O. So all we need to do is go through the four molecules and see which one's got both of those. So starting with A, we've obviously got the C double bond O, but we've got the OH of a carboxylic acid, so it's not that one. B, we've got an ester group there, so we've got the C double bond O, but we haven't got the OH of an alcohol, so it's not that one. Uh, C, we've got the OH of a phenol, um, and we've got the C double bond over the aldehyde group. So, yep, that's the answer. We'll just rule out D. So we've got the OH of an alcohol, and we've got an, a single bond O to single bond CH3. So, obviously, that's not uh, going to be the right answer. Moving on to 12. So, acyl chloride, so example, ethanoyl chloride, react with things like water, alcohols, amines, and phenols. So which one of those is likely to react with ethanol chloride? It is D, because that is an amine. Moving on to number 13. So aliphatic compounds don't have benzene rings in them. So one doesn't have a benzene ring. Uh, two doesn't have a benzene ring. Three is a benzene ring. So one and two only, B. Number 14, so which compounds are hydrolyzed by aqueous hydrochloric acid to produce butanoic acid? So one is an ester, so we're going to break the ester bond when it's hydrolyzed, and this left-hand part of that line will be the carboxylic acid. So if I just scribble that out and put an OH on there. So yeah, that's butanoic acid. Sorry, that's very messy. Uh, two, so we've got a nitrile, so that will be hydrolyzed as well. So the, that CN triple bond breaks and you get a Ku group on there. That's pentanoic acid, so that's not it. Uh, three, that doesn't react with aqueous HCl. So just one, so D. And finally, number 15, so you can see in one, we've got three electron regions around the carbon, the highlighted carbon. They're all bonding regions, so that will be 120 degree bond angle. You've got the same going on in 2, so that will be 120, and you've got the same going on in 3 as well. So all three were right, so A is the answer.